of scientific knowledge, because while people have motives, information does not. In other words, although science denial is sometimes rooted in justifiable sentiment, it is not rooted in logic, and therefore simply is not the answer to our problems. The dangers of rejecting our fundamental knowledge of nature are compounded in the information age, whose crowning achievement is the almighty Internet. Although this invention has only been in widespread use for a mere two decades, it is already utterly and inextricably embedded in the functionality of our civilization. The Internet is how we do things, and it is how we know things. It is how we communicate with one another. It is how we know which movies are playing this weekend, where to find the best Italian restaurant, or what the weather is like before looking out the window. Beyond trivialities, however, the Internet is also the way many people probe the nature of reality to amass a worldview. Continuing the trend set into motion by the printing press nearly six centuries ago, the Internet represents the ultimate democratization of information. There we find all of the information, updated in real time, essentially for free, apart from costly primary scientific literature. Anyone can access this mountain of data and anyone can throw whatever they please onto the pile. While there are tremendous benefits to this paradigm shift, as it has become increasingly difficult to censor information, the transparency comes at a price. We have condemned ourselves to perpetually sifting through a digital cacophony of contradiction that often leaves truth obscured. Prior to the Internet, there were sources of information that were unanimously agreed upon to be trustworthy and reliable. Stories published by newspapers had to be heavily researched by professional journalists. Knowledge from an encyclopedia was not questioned by those who needed to reference a fact because they were written by top specialists in every discipline, which contributed to their considerable cost. Whether we regard them as good or bad, those times are gone and they are never coming back. Unlike the encyclopedias of old, the quality of information on the Internet is not reliable. It ranges from outstanding to abysmal. For this reason, the Internet can serve as a magic mirror, a place where people go to confirm pre-existing bias. Outlets that reflect what we already know are correct and trustworthy. Those that do not are ignored, deemed fraudulent, deceitful paid for by malevolent institutions, or worse. This method of assessment rarely has any respect for the qualifications of those who produce the content we encounter, which has led to what is popularly referred to as the post-truth era. In this relatively new era, irrefutable facts and the firm consensus of the scientific community are often eschewed in favor of charlatans who peddle nothing more than a flashy narrative. Such pseudoscientific narratives have become popular for a number of reasons. On a more subtle and philosophical level, we are susceptible to wishful thinking. Science offers us a cold and indifferent universe, a narrative that is antithetical to the divinely ordained status humanity has grown accustomed to over the millennia. But the appeal to pseudoscience also arrives largely in response to harmful practices enacted by the aforementioned large corporations. And because anti-corporate sentiment is so widely held, it has become trivial to fool large sectors of the population with a handful of buzzwords and scare tactics. There was a time when charlatans would travel from town to town selling snake oil. This useless concoction was peddled as a cure-all for what ails you, and gullible people would buy it. Since that time, snake oil has become a euphemism for deceptive marketing, and the sale of digital snake oil is rampant on the Internet. This new and improved incarnation is not limited to potions and lotions. It has morphed into an idea, a feeling, a way of believing the universe must operate. It has always been clear that if a number of people are willing to buy a particular product, someone will create that product in order to profit off of the demand. But beyond this, it is now clear that if enough people simply want to believe in a particular reality, media will be crafted to corroborate that reality. The desire to believe becomes the tendency to click, and clicks mean bucks. This is no secret. Information exists on the Internet because it is to be clicked upon.